Now, what is going on everybody? Today we are going to talk about dependency injection in Node, uh, specifically with this little library here, uh, which is called Avelix. So it's like pretty cool. Uh, here it says, extremely powerful inversion of control container for Node. Um, it's super handy and it's especially really good for writing very testable code, which we always want to strive for, right? So um, yeah, let's just check this thing out. And uh, this tutorial here will be a little bit different because we will not be writing everything from scratch, but we're just going to check out like uh, an existing application. And uh, then we're going to add dependency injection to it. So you guys can see what the main benefit of it is. Nice. So before we jump into this thing, I'm just going to pull up like my postman. So I have the application running on port 8080. And uh, well, if we just look at it from a black box perspective, um, it is pretty simple. So we can make like a post request to this slash dev endpoint, which is supposed to mean like developer. And this is just going to create an entry in a database. And that's it. Um, but there's a little bit of business logic involved. Business logic, quote unquote. Um, it's, I just made a little bit of logic to show you like how to test the service layer later on. So that's why we have this business logic, right? Okay, so we, you can pass like a first name, a last name and some middle names. And what people sometimes do is um, they don't pass it like correctly. So for example, someone, might, someone with the name James Jonathan Alexander Smith um, might pass like the values like this which is actually correct. Um, but some people also do it like this. So they have a first name, for example, James, then a space and then Jonathan. And then your first name is actually not James Jonathan, but just James, because the first name just stops at the first space. And that is basically the business logic, business logic, uh, quote unquote, that we have uh, in our example. And um, what this is going to do is if I fire this request, uh, first of all, it's going to cre create uh, to return me a 201 created. And I have a database running like a Postgres instance uh, locally. And I can uh, make a select star from the table. And there you see it. So you have, okay, it just put everything into, into um, the database. But it kind of understood that um, this person, like the, that the middle name is Jonathan Alexander, like that these two names are the middle names and the first name is just James. That's what this thing does. And um, that's pretty much the only thing it can do. Cool. So pretty simple. I tried to do a simple example and I just want to walk you through the code first. Uh, so you get like an understanding on how all of this works. Um, how you would normally write it, like without dependency injection, and what problems you will have. And we will especially see this because now we have a service layer. But let's directly jump into the code. So this is our main index.js file. And um, we have two things here. So we have a server and we have a configuration. And before we start, by the way, um, if you are cloning this project locally, uh, make sure to go to this um, config uh, directory and in the index.js file and put your database credentials here if you have your database running locally. So for example, my database user is this. Um, you will most likely have a different user. So port should be the same. Uh, maybe you have a password for your uh, database running locally. So in that case, you need um, to just adapt it here. And maybe you also have like a different um, database name. So before you can run all of this, you need to actually run Postgres locally, create like a database um, with this name, for example, or with another name. And um, then also execute like this little SQL script that you find on the migrations. And what this is going to do, it's just going to create like uh, this little table here, like with an ID, with an email, the first name, the middle names and the last name. Okay, so with that being said, let's go back to the index.js file. And um, yeah, we have a server 
and um, we create an instance of the server and then we run it. And if we go to the server uh, file, then you can see it's actually pretty simple. So this is just a normal express app. And what we are doing is we create an express app. We plug in like some JSON middleware. We plug in some router. And then we also plug in some error handler. Now this error handler is not super relevant like for this tutorial. I just put it in so you know if you send an invalid request or something that's unexpected that you get a proper error message that's like easier for local development. So of course in production you always have something like this. For this tutorial it's not really necessary but I just put it in anyway. Okay and um, let's have a look at this router because that's like the um, main thing that we are interested in. And here's the point where it gets interesting um, because we have one router and this router itself uses uh, another sub router which is located over here. And uh, here you see the two routes we have. So we can send like a post request to slash dev and uh, it expects like a certain DTO. So this is like the thing that you saw previously with first name, middle names and, and last name. And it uh, has the request handling inside of a controller. And now we actually come to the dependency injection part because this controller um, is just a class and it has a little bit of logic here. And what you will immediately see is that I just directly export one instance of this controller. Now, sometimes people don't even use controllers. Sometimes they might even do something like this. So they might just have like a function here or like a couple of functions. So something like, I don't know, um, function create dev. You know, then they have the logic here and then they will just export like an object with this. Okay, so sometimes people don't use the class syntax. But what I will say is applies to both, uh, like if you use functions or if you use this class-based approach. And you should use the class-based approach for uh, dependency injection, by the way. Okay, so this thing is going to export like one single instance of the controller. And uh, it has literally like no logic. It's just calling like some service. And the interesting part that I want to point out is that it is directly importing the service. And that is kind of a problem because if we want to test this code, then it's going to be really hard because if I import this dev controller, then it's going to automatically import like the service. And this service is located over here. So that's actually the business logic that we're talking about with splitting first names and last names. So I think how this works in particular is not really relevant, um, but yeah, um, I'm just, the most important thing that you see here as well is that we have the same pattern. So we have the service and it's again exporting just one instance of itself. And it's also directly importing the data access object. And the data access object is, where is it? It's over here, yeah. And the data access object is itself importing like a database and has like some logic. So it's using like Next.js under the hood. And now you might already see the problem. So if I go to the service layer, uh, if I go back to the service layer over here, and um, let's just say I only want to test like this method. So I just want to check whether this logic here is doing what I expect it to do. Then what I have to do, since I am only exporting one instance of this service, I would need to import this thing into my tests. But this thing is importing like a whole bunch of stuff that I actually don't even care about. Like it's importing the data, it's importing the data access object, which is in turn importing the database and so on and so on. So you see, it's kind of a little bit uh, like too much coupling like in between. And that is like the main problem that you often see. So that code, like it works perfectly fine, but it's just extremely hard to test. And the main idea of dependency injection here is to say that you do not directly import like the dependency, but you rather accept the dependencies as a parameter. So effectively you would have a constructor 
And inside of this constructor, you would just expect someone or something to pass your data access object. And you would not import it directly like this. And this is now way more flexible because if I only want to test like this little helper method over here, I can just, you know, put in a stub or, or just fake like this data access object. And I don't need to bother with the database uh, library throwing an error because it cannot connect like to the database because it's not running locally in my unit tests, something like this. And that is the main idea of dependency injection and the main idea of uh, this little Avelix uh, library that I just showed you at the beginning. So let me just put that back. And what we are now going to do is we are just going to um, get this library like this Avelix dependency injection library. And we're going to fix all of that so that afterwards, once we're done, every single part of this application, like the controller, the service, the data access object, uh, will be testable on its own and this is like way better because it's just way easier to write tests and we're also going to write a couple of tests and dependency injection itself is an extremely powerful concept it is like baked into a lot of technologies like if you know spring boot then uh, you know what dependency injection is but oftentimes i don't see it being used like for node applications um, but it's just extremely helpful to write testable code because remember, in JavaScript, you don't have types. And if you also don't have tests, because it's kind of too hard to, to test it, or because you have to do some rewiring magic under the hood, it's just easier to use dependency injection. And in this series, we're going to cover how to do this. Um, but since we are already over like 12 minutes already, uh, I would just say, let's continue in the next video. Uh, let's continue refactoring this application. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. Um, also, if you have a question, uh, leave me a comment. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. I have linked it in the description down below. My Twitter handle, it's at Production Coder. And uh, yeah, thanks again uh, for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.